Hey y'all, we are back with another episode of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It's episode two of six, and let's talk about the Star Spangled Man. Okay, so we start the episode off with new Captain America. I really just want to call him fake Captain America. And I don't like anything about him. I don't like his face. I don't like his uniform. I don't like that he's walking around with Cap's shield slash Sam's shield. And I'm so glad that Bucky calls Sam to task first thing in the episode. But before we get there, we're going to have to talk about John Walker. So the new Captain America is a guy named John Walker who was supposed to be just this amazing soldier, super stellar guy, yada, yada, yada. I'm sorry. It's already set up for me just not to like you because you cannot replace Captain America. Like America just loves a figurehead. America just loves a little puppet. America just loves a mascot. And that is what they're given in the first two to three minutes of this episode. It is absolutely hilarious. They try to ground John Walker's story by giving us a little intimate moment between him and his wife, as well as his best friend, and a little peek into the anxiety that he feels in reference to stepping into Captain America's shoes. And while that's cute and all, sis, I'm still not buying it because I don't want you to be the new Captain America. And that's just that. Something about John Walker just gives me shady. Something about him just gives me not right. And as we go throughout the episode, it doesn't get any better for me. They definitely work overtime to try to present him as the best possible new Captain America candidate. And even that makes me wonder and makes me question what is actually going on. So y'all, I'm suspicious from the top of the episode through the end. And we're going to talk about each moment that I'm looking at them sideways. This episode picks up a few days after the first episode where we saw the official announcement of Captain America. And by this time, the tour has already started. The promo, the press, we see the new Captain America doing Good Morning America. And Sam gets to see this on television as well as Bucky. And Bucky is not having it. Bucky went from avoiding Sam's calls to rolling up on him right before he's about to go on a mission. Like, it should be you. What are you doing? You need to go take it back. You're wasting time. And I'm here for all of it. Like, I'm here for all the smoke. Part of me is also wondering, like, well, what are you doing? Because you're in therapy and you're having this little existential crisis. You don't know what your purpose is and all that good stuff. So either one of y'all could have took the shield. Either way, why is it sitting at the Smithsonian? Why is it back in the custody of the government? Y'all know the government does not make good decisions. And it seems like Marvel is going a different route, y'all, because we're getting another fight sequence in this episode. And you know, in WandaVision, it didn't start getting good. It didn't start getting action-packed until after episode five. But we're here in episode two, and we're getting another fight sequence. Bucky joins Sam on a mission looking for the leader of the Flag Smashers. He has a little bit of intel that they're out right outside of Munich. And they go there, and then we get to see this whole masterful fight sequence that's actually taking place on with the car chase in the middle so there's two supply trucks unfortunately bucky mistakes carly morgenthal as a hostage when in all actuality she is the leader of the flag smashers or flag smasher himself based on carl morgenthal from the comics and and i ain't gonna lie y'all carly and the rest of the flag smashers it's eight of them in total they hand them their hats y'all they really they beat them up <laughs> once the soldier is struggling in the fight falcon is struggling in the fight part of it is that they're outnumbered but then also captain america has tracked um falcon there so he joins the fight with his little sidekick Battlestar, whatever lamar whoever and they all just basically get their hats and ha handed to them and get tossed off and then the four come together so that they can try to figure out um what to do next how will they proceed and Bucky wants no part of it right like Bucky wants no part of this new Captain America once he figures out or finds out that the guy with him is 
Captain America's sidekick Battlestar, which is back actually supposed to be who Bucky was to the actual Captain America. He like, all right, let me out this car. We're done here. I don't want to work with you. I don't need to work with you. Goodbye. John Walker tries to convince Bucky and Sam that he is not trying to um, replace Captain America. He's not trying to be him. He actually admired him. And it's like, but sir, that's exactly what you're doing, though. Like, how is it not? I'll wait. Bucky decides to take this opportunity of not necessarily knowing what they're going to do next. He tries to convince Falcon again to just take the shield back so that they can handle this on his own. And at this point, they're already too deep in it. And Sam reminds him of this. Like, what do you want us to do? Just go ahead and just rob the man of the shield and take it. Like, we can't do that at this point. He's already Captain America. And Bucky decides to pull a trick out of his sleeve and introduce Sam to another super soldier. But one of the first, like him and Cap, but Cap didn't know about him. Um, and it's Isaiah. And this causes a little bit more tension between Sam and Bucky because Bucky has known about this man this whole time. And whole time there has been a black super soldier from the era of Cap, from the era of the Winter Soldier that nobody else really knew about. And we don't get too much clarity around that. We just get to know that not many people knew about it. But in their short exchange, he is not willing to help. He just wants to see for himself what Sam wanted and then quickly throws him out. And then, y'all, we get this little moment of Sam walking while black because the police show up and attempt to engage with him in a way of, like, arresting him before they realize that it is the Falcon that they're talking to. And I just thought that this was a very interesting little note that they put in here because yeah our world i can't ultimately these two are taken into custody but not because of falcon because of the winter soldier who in his gallivant into munich he has missed a therapy session and that is against his um pardon so he is pulled immediately into custody and then has to go into a therapy session which they also loop sam into and it is I, this was the funniest thing for me watching these two in this therapy session was just such comic relief for the whole episode it's great what I struggle with is why these two um, bump heads so much. Like, I know Winter Soldier has a bunch of things going on in his head. He's trying to figure out his place in his in the world and his purpose. And yes, he resents Sam for giving the shield back because Cap did give it to Sam. But it still doesn't make sense as to why these two just can't get on the same accord. Because they are the most... They, they should be the closest people in this world this is post blip they went through all they went through together they both lost cap and they both were very close to him so i'm just like if y'all don't get it together and stop this little back and forth high school bickering this is ridiculous both sam and bucky have a lot to work on individually i think sam has a better grasp of what his position is in the world and what his purpose is and because bucky is struggling with that he's also struggling with his interpersonal relationships he's struggling with friendships and all that comes along with like really creating a full rich life and i think sam is just resentful of doing all that they have done for the world and the country being put in this like financial strain and not necessarily being well taken care of working outside of the government so that he can keep his freedom but it's like he's done so much and still has to to struggle or still has to like fight for every little bit and even this note of him being stopped by the police and confronted for doing absolutely nothing just reminds him like you're just this person no matter what you do and I think that that's what we're going to see as the through line of like, what is the internal struggle for Sam in this season? Ultimately, the new Captain America gets um, Bucky released after the whole therapy session thing. He tries again to get them back on the same accord and to say, yo, like, let's all work together. And sam and bucky they not having it and then this is where we really get to see the like peek into maybe the new captain america isn't the hero that we think he is or that they're trying to make us believe that he is because when 
he asks them for help and to join them again and they say no he says just make sure you don't get in my way and i'm just like sir you're the one who will be in the way like it's not confirmed yet that the new captain america is uh, is actually a super soldier um and i know that sam doesn't have superpowers but he's definitely a very skilled skilled airman and as falcon he functions beautifully on a, another level right but when I'm looking at it, you and your little battle Galactica star sister friend boy over here, y'all are the least qualified. Like you might be amazing humans, but you're not, you don't have any extra anything that's going to help you. Like the Winter Soldier has a vibranium arm. Falcon is the Falcon. You were just handpicked by some other humans to put on this costume and throw around this shield and like, yeah, you can pick it up, but you ain't all that bro. Talking about don't get in my way you get out the way you are like in the way so i'm calling it now i definitely can see an antagonistic shift with john walker as the new captain america and i do believe that sam is going to ultimately decide that yeah he should be the captain america so that's going to also put them at odds when sam comes for that shield and he don't want to give it up it's going to be a problem the episode ends on our dynamic duo going to go see Zemo and this makes me so nervous y'all because this is the one who had the codes to activate certain things with Bucky back from his Hydra days and we can tell that they are definitely um, up against a rock and a hard place or at the end of their ropes in reference to what are they going to do now they are technically out operating outside of the reservation so they're operating outside of the U.S. government um I am very nervous for what episode three is going to be. As I mentioned at the start of this episode, this season is only going to have six episodes. So episode three is going to be the midpoint of this season, which we can probably expect a very, very big climax or a very big low point. I can't wait till next week. All right, y'all, that is my take on episode two, The Star Spangled Man from the Falcon and Winter Soldier Disney Plus series. Now it's your turn. Tell me what you thought of this week's episode in the comment section down below. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and join the tribe. I'm Erica Vane and I post new videos every day, multiple times a day, covering all of the best series on television and streaming, recapping the best uh, films in theater and streaming, and giving you entertainment news you don't want to miss an upload so make sure you hit that subscribe button and you made it to the end of the video so don't leave without pressing the like button and I know that you are loving it here you ain't ready to go yet so go ahead and check out the rest of my the Falcon and Winter Soldier videos in our the Falcon and Winter Soldier playlist or check out a new and exciting series that you haven't seen yet but it's just as good I got some suggestions on the left see you in the next video bye